Hello world, it's Siraj, and the most popular AI in the world right now is OpenAI's ChatGPT. We're gonna build a mini version of it in under 40 lines of Python code called ElonGPT so that I can ask it for a free ride to Mars. OpenAI trained ChatGPT to be able to have useful conversations with people, and it's already being used to automate the boring parts of sales, marketing, programming, content creation, and customer support. Previous chatbots were incapable of having conversations because they frequently output nonsense, couldn't remember what a user said previously, and weren't trained on enough data to be able to speak on a diverse range of topics. ChatGPT solved all of these problems. It can generate eligible English and code. It can remember what you say up to a certain limit, and it's able to talk about a very diverse range of topics. It was created in three steps. Generative pre-training to learn English, supervised fine-tuning to learn dialogue, and reinforcement learning from human feedback to improve its dialogue based on human preferences. In the first step, OpenAI collected a data set of 500 gigabytes of text data, including web pages, books, articles, wikis, academic papers, even code. The goal was to find a way to model text as a sequence of words in the English language. The model was a simplified version of the transformer, originally introduced by Google for language translation, but this time without the encoder. This generative pre-trained transformer or GPT model only had three main components, embeddings, a decoder, and output conversion. The embeddings component maps or embeds each word to a numerical value, including semantic and positional information, allowing the model to perform mathematical operations more efficiently on text data. The decoder is a stack of blocks which can be as deep as we'd like. Each block will pass the embeddings to an attention layer, then to a feed forward network. Attention is the main feature of a transformer. It's the only mechanism that enables transformers to selectively focus on different parts of the input sequence when making predictions by allowing information to flow between inputs. The neural network multiplies the input data by a weight matrix, adds a bias value, which allows the model to make predictions that are not solely based on input data, and passes the result to an activation function so that it can learn both linear and nonlinear functions. Input times weight add a bias activate. Repeat. This is all optimized via gradient descent, which minimizes the prediction error by iteratively updating the weight matrices of the neural network. To improve the model's output, it can be initialized with the weights of any GPT, such as GPT-2. They found that unsupervised learning on raw text data was not enough to have it converse with users instead of merely completing their prompt. Currently, if the model was fed the question, describe support vector machines, it could technically output describe neural networks because it contains a list of questions like that somewhere in its training data. This is called the alignment problem. How do we align an AI with our goals? To improve its performance, they created a set of 13K manually constructed dialogues by hiring 40 contractors to play both sides of the conversation. We don't have the patience to create a two-way human dialogue dataset to fine-tune our model. So let's instead fine-tune our model on a dataset of one-person dialogue, 3,000 of Elon Musk's latest tweets using the Hugging Face library. Once trained, we can use it for text generation by passing in a prompt and the model will continue the prompt. Reinforcement learning, or RL, is used to fine tune the model through a learned reward function based on human preferences. In this process, the model acts as an agent that makes decisions in an environment by performing actions, receiving rewards, and updating its policy. The algorithm they used was called Proximal Policy Optimization, or PPO, which updates the policy in small steps and balances exploration and exploitation to ensure the policy converges to the optimal solution. We'll use the TextRL Python library to control the output of a language model to be negative, specifically for the Elon GPT model. The process starts by loading the sentiment classifier called Roberta from Hugging Face. The sentiment classifier is used as a reward model where a positive reward is given for negative output from Elon GPT and a deduction for positive output. The agent is initialized using the pre-trained model and the optimization is done via PPO. The goal is to maximize a reward and train the model to become more negative over time. 
At first, the output won't be trained enough to be negative, so we'll train it for longer, and then, when we prompt it, it will be negative. Looks like no free Mars ride for us. Pretty cool, but this could still be improved. ChatGPT still displays inaccurate information. It doesn't cite its sources. It still requires prompt engineering for specific behavior, and there is still no physical embodiment yet, meaning it's not running on a physical robot, which will be exciting. If you want to see more ChatGPT videos, hit subscribe. And for now, I've got to go chat with the GPT. So thanks for watching.